Hi, Alicia. Let's take a look at your new set of essays. We've got the German school subjects. Let's see. The pie chart above depicts the popularity of nine school subjects. Is it nine? Are you sure? Hold on. Nope. Check again. It's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know where you got nine. You really want to avoid a mistake like this because the examiner is going to say, okay, well, she wrote nine, but she only described maybe six or seven. So um, they're going to feel that, you know, you've, you've got a, a, a fairly big problem here. Okay, so try to be accurate with that. Let's try it again. The pie chart depicts, I would even get rid of above because it's actually not going to be above. You're going to get your um, question uh, paper and then, you know, your answer is going to be on a different piece. Anyway, so you don't have to write um, above. So the pie chart depicts the popularity of seven school subjects chosen by German students in 2017. Subjects are presented in percentages and add up to 100%. Well, that's pretty obvious. I would not even have bothered to write this. Obviously, the percentages add up to 100%, okay? And uh, pie charts usually are in percentages. So I felt like this sentence was not necessary, okay? It doesn't help you. You're just giving us information that's pretty um, self-evident. So don't waste time and, and uh, space on something that's kind of uh, self-explanatory, okay? And it looks like you were pretty good in terms of word count anyway. So let me see. Oh, yeah, that might be why you did that. Okay, because right here you were at 150 words. So maybe that's why you just had to do that. But I'm going to look at this and tell you where you could have possibly extended your answer. Now, here's the thing with this particular pie chart. Um, it's not very often that IELTS gives you a pie chart like this. Usually they'll give you this for like 2017 and then another one for like 2021 or something. So usually they would give you two of these. Okay, and then you would have to like um, describe one and then the other, make comparisons and so forth. Occasionally, though, they do give you something that seems really simplistic, and then it requires a new set of skills, and that is extending your answer. Okay, and that's a writing skill that is important to have as well. So, not just editing and kind of making things concise, but also knowing how to stretch things out. Occasionally, that, that is um, something you have to do as well. So we're going to talk about how you could have done that here, okay? All right, so the most popular lesson was physical education, favored by 22.9% of pupils, followed very closely by history with merely half a percent less. Good. Maths and physics gained popularity amongst nearly one-fifth of the students each, with respectively, I would have put respectively at the end, with 19.5 and 18.1% respectively. Okay, now here is some place where you could have stretched this out, okay? So let me show you what I mean. Maths and physics gain popularity amongst nearly one-fifth of students each, period. More specifically, maths was just under 20% at 19.5, and uh, physics was even lower than this, or rather was, um, yeah, I guess like 1.5% less, or more than one, I don't know. Uh, and physics was um, slightly less popular at 18.1. You could have done that. So... Really, just in extending this, you've gained at least like a good 10 to 20 words, okay? All right. Um, then, I would have said three additional disciplines. So three additional disciplines, uh, each made up less than 10%. So you're missing some words here. IT was significantly less popular than the rest of the subjects with 3.7%. Now, here you have a wonderful opportunity to say that it is the least popular subject. So, uh, here I would have just said comma, making it the least popular subject among German students. Okay, again, extending. And it's not just extending, 
but it's emphasizing some of these important features. So you told us the most popular lesson was physical education, so that was fine. You signposted it very well. But I think it's worthwhile to do the same thing with IT, okay? So that's something I would have done there. IT was significantly less popular than the rest of the subjects with 3.7%, making it the least popular subject amongst German students, okay? The second and third least popular disciplines were geography at 6.4 and biography, I can't talk tonight, biology with 7.1. Again, when you have a lot of data, doing this is fine. But here, because you're trying to stretch out, again, I would have given each one of these your own second sentence. So the second least popular discipline was geography at 6.4%, period. Biology scored slightly higher. Uh, more specifically, 0.7% uh, um, more uh, at 7.1%, okay? So you could have done something like that. Another thing that's really interesting to do here is, you know, you mentioned this thing about IT. Well, take a look at how it compares to the most popular subject. It's like one seventh. So you could have said something like, it was seven times less popular than uh, the most popular subject, physical education. So those are things you can do, okay? <clears throat> they really help extend your answer, and they also help give those comparisons um, that, that make this really worthwhile and really kind of more meaningful. All right, overall, it can be noted that excluding geography, biology, and IT, comma, the level of popularity was quite similar among the rest of mm, among the rest of the remaining four subjects. It can be noted that students were more likely to pick PE and history over science subjects like geography and biology. All right, that's fine. Um, it was a, a nice uh, overview. I didn't mind that at all. Uh, so fine there. Um, yeah, so good. Um, just think about the stuff that I talked about to help extend, okay? Now let's take a look at this here. All right, let's take a look now at your task two. The issue of working from home and moving work activities online has grown in importance since the COVID-19 pandemic. During that time, comma, offices emptied and workers had to learn how to replace a personal contact with video calls, get rid of A here, how to replace personal contact with video calls and chat rooms. Get rid of the comma here after even though. Even though after a period of readjustment, online communication is considered natural, the disadvantages of internet meetups should be should also be taken into account. In this essay, I will outline the bad and good aspects of the popularity of online communication without Anne, based on examples and current research. Okay, so it's natural. So I'm trying to see... What's your perspective? That it's natural, but there are disadvantages? So did you answer this? Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? From here, it's not totally clear to me, Alicia. It needs to be clear which outweighs which. Okay, that's the question they asked. Then, um, I don't love the word bad and good in essays. I know they're very natural, but they just seem so, so elementary. Okay, so maybe even something like the positive and negative aspects would have been better. Okay, all right, let's see. On the one hand, moving work and meetings online became a much easier, faster, and cheaper way than organizing gatherings in the office. Workers can log in from anywhere in the world, and time that would otherwise be spent traveling is saved. Companies are managed, mm, companies manage. Oh, wait, companies are managed. I think I understand what you're trying to say here. All right, companies are managed. It just sounds a little unnatural. Companies are managed to bring the bet biggest profit possible, so saving costs on office spaces, workers' time, and travel will always be appreciated. For example, big corporations like Google and Microsoft resigned of, this is wrong, significant number of their working desks to encourage employees to switch to work from home. I don't, this is not what you mean. I don't know what you're trying to say here. Resigned of significant number. That's really awkward. So I'm not really sure what you're trying to say. Additionally, both mentioned companies, aforementioned is what you want. 
Or you don't even have to say mention, just say, Additionally, both companies created their own applications, MS Teams and Google Meet, that make online meetings more not sufficient, efficient, with features like chats, online presentations, and microphone. All right. Uh, this is awkward. Uh, let me think about this. Okay, let me think about this. Um, so, okay, how can I explain this? Um, I'm a little, I'm a little concerned about the direction that this is taking, and I'll explain to you why. It's partially because you really focused on COVID-19 and what COVID-19 has made us do and the shift it has kind of forced us to take. This isn't just about that. This is a lot more general than just what's been going on in the last two years. So I think that one thing people really disregard is online communication is not just things like Slack or Google Meets or Zoom or whatever. It's also email, okay? So, you know, a lot of stuff goes on through all of these different channels, okay? And that's what this essay is about. And the fact that we do so much more of this, this communication online through things like Slack, through email, through, you know, whatever, like the whatever video calling thing. Okay, we're doing so much of that that we don't need these online, we don't need these face-to-face -face meetings. And we're doing far less of them. We're doing much more of this online stuff and far less of this. And so the question is, is this a good thing or is it a bad thing that we're doing so much more of this and so much less of this? That's what this essay is about. So what are you telling me here? I'm just trying to make sure that your task achievement is okay. So you're telling me that this is good because we save time. It's also saying that we save a lot, it's a lot of money this way. Okay, and then I don't really think this was relevant. Okay, this didn't really help you. Uh, let's see. Switch from work to home. Right, like this whole work from home thing. Um, again, it feels kind of COVID nineteen specific. Okay. So I don't know if I really, I really love that. So what, um, let's see, I can log in anywhere. Okay. I, so I basically feel like a lot of this, like up to here, I mean, up to here where you kind of lost me, you were fine. But then the second half of the paragraph for me, um, wasn't really what it could or should have been. So again, what are we talking about? We're talking about the fact that we're meeting in person much less, and instead we're doing so much more of this video conferencing and emailing and chatting online so that we don't have so many meetings. So you could have talked about just how much more efficient this is, how much more work we get done. And not only that, but you could also talk about how um, there's a written record of everything that we do. So. When something is sent through email, there is no um, kind of, you know, misunderstanding insofar as, you know, like, oh, well, I didn't say that, or, oh, you know, you said this. No, it's, you have a written record of everything, okay? So, you know, whether or not you were paying attention in the meeting or not, it's there in written form for you to have a record of it. And so this is, um, you know, a, 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 an efficient way of making sure communication lines don't get crossed. So some of this stuff was, um, I think some of the ideas you could have addressed here. Uh, yes, of course, it's more cost effective. It's more efficient in terms of time. Absolutely. So maybe you could have addressed those a little more. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes with people in working in the same company, or you know, maybe not even in the same company, sometimes clients and, and, you know, they're the, the provider, they have to meet, and this is very inefficient. So 
Um, I think if you had talked a little bit more about this stuff, including email in this, then it would have been good and not making it so COVID focused, okay? Because I kind of felt like it was. All right, let's take a look at your next paragraph. Would you say on the one hand, on the other hand? Good. On the other hand, online meetings require a special pattern of a conversation. What do you mean here? Uh, this is a little awkward here, okay, Alicia? Special pattern of a conversation uh, with waiting quietly for an answer. I think I know what you're trying to say, but it's coming off a little awkward. So maybe you could say, on the other hand, online meetings um, require a rather unnatural type of conversation where one must wait for the other person to respond and delays because of connection may vary. Okay, so I think this is what you're trying to say here. Okay. So switching off microphones and taking, ah, there you go, taking internet connection delay into consideration. Perfect. Meanwhile, face-to-face -face contact allows participants to talk simultaneously during a conference or discuss some issues in smaller groups on the sidelines, comma here, which helps create bonds between people passionate about similar things. Okay. So you're talking about the negatives of online communication. Okay. Uh, yes. The time spent in common conference rooms creates an environment supporting networking that can boost team spirit and improve employees. I would have put an apostrophe, S apostrophe here, perception of the company. Research from Harvard University showed that team leaders who were given the opportunity to meet their coworkers in person were 20% quicker in organizing task templates. Therefore, it is clear there is a considerably strong case against moving all communication online. Okay, I really like this last sentence. I really like this. Um, the only thing that I really don't agree with in this paragraph is that you made it a for and against. What do I mean? I mean, you made it about in favor of online communication and against online communication. And again, that's not what this is about. It's something a lot more specific. They're telling you that we do so much more of this now. It's like, how can I say this? Like maybe like 70% online versus like 30% in person. Do the, the, do the advantages of this outweigh the disadvantages? Do you understand what the difference is? So it's not a online communication is, online communication is good, online communication is bad. No, that's oversimplifying this. This is about this kind of shift in our in our work uh, culture where we're doing so much of this stuff online rather than meeting in person. Do the advantages of this shift outweigh the disadvantages of the shift? Okay, so that's what I mean by saying it's a much more specific question. And a lot of people do this. They just oversimplify the question. Okay, so that's what I want you to be careful about. In conclusion, although the development of online means of communication has numerous advantages, there are still some benefits that can only be gained with meeting in person. Therefore, if companies decide to rely only on internet platforms for meetups, there might be some serious implications. Okay, this last sentence is good. But again, here, it's not the development of online means, it's this shift, okay? I'm gonna say that again. So although the shift to online or the shift to primarily online means of communication has advantages. So do you understand? That's how you get more focused and more specific onto what they're asking you. It's the shift that they're concerned about, not is online communication good, is online communication bad, okay? I've talked a lot, so I hope what I've been saying makes sense. I hope it's clear, and I hope you think that my uh, feedback about this is is fair and that you. I want to make sure you understand the difference in what we're talking about here okay so let me know if you have any questions and i mean it's good again you've got some problems with articles when to use a when to use the and so forth so be careful with that um and let's see another set okay let me know if you have any questions or ideas or thoughts about this all right good luck